So let me just say from the very beginning that I am not used to doing this. Um, this is going to be a completely different way of approaching Bible study. We normally have a Bible study on Wednesday night, and so the content here is just part of that study that we would have done had we had class. And so I'm excited for you to join us. It is kind of in the middle of a study about faith, and yet I think there's some important things we can learn about faith today, especially with all the things that are going on around us. So it is important that we look at what it means to believe, and so that's what we're kind of doing today. Uh, the title for this class is Because We Believe, and there will be several sessions on it. What we believe may be more important than ever. We can choose to believe all of the hype and all of the things that are going on around us and say this is kind of the end and it's really horrible and everything is going to end in disaster. Or we can choose to believe that it will be over soon and that it won't be that long and just, you know, 14 days and uh, everything will be fine again and we'll all go back to normal. What's the truth? And the question is not something that we are able to determine at this point. In 14 days, I suppose we will see whether or not it's all over. And by next year, we'll be able to look back and see whether, oh, that was just a scare or whether it was really something serious that we needed to look at and have done more. But what we choose to believe is going to be what determines our reaction. And so determining our reaction and the things that we are going to do is all important. So the first question that comes is, am I wrong? Whatever I choose to believe, whether I believe it is something that will be over soon or whether I believe this is a long range thing that will change the whole world, uh, what happens if I'm wrong? Well, we will find out later. The worst thing we can do is to not decide and just live in fear. That seems to be the worst case scenario of what we are faced with now. We need to be able to decide how we are going to treat this, what we are going to do, and to not be afraid of it, but to go ahead and face it with faith. And that's what's important. So because we believe may have some different, um, different types of things that we have to look at. And so it is our choice to believe. We could choose to believe in ourselves, but we find that kind of limiting. And so just me and a bottle of Clorox wipes or Lysol or something else that will take care of the germ problem and I will be able to solve my own issue and the whole disease myself. Or we could believe in technology. We believe there are doctors who are doing something about this and that they will find a vaccine and they will find a way to solve this and rid the world of whatever this virus is at this time. Well, life go back to normal. We really don't know at this point what it's going to do. And so I don't want to take the worst case scenario and maybe we don't want to take the best case scenario. But what is it that you're going to believe? We can believe in evolution and that this is evolution of the species and now it's come to be our turn and it's not a very promising outlook at this point. We can also choose to believe that there is a God who has sent Jesus and that he is in control of all things and that whatever happens, it is all in his hand. And so we don't have to decide the fate of the world. We just have to decide who has the authority and what do we believe. And so if we believe in God and whatever God wants to do, we can pray to God, we recognize Jesus, and that that is a decision of faith. And so because we believe God is in control and that God is the one who controls all things, we put our trust and we put our hope in him. Therefore, the outcome is not completely horrible, but it is going to be bright. It is going to be whatever God decides. There are decisions that need to be made. 
And so the first thing is recognizing that we can decide. In Matthew 21, we find Jesus in a similar situation where people are questioning his authority. There is no doubt he's been doing miracles. There is no doubt that he is able to do some amazing things. And yet they begin to question his authority because they cannot question the results. And so if they can disprove his authority, then he has no right to do the amazing, wonderful healings that he has been doing. The passage is Matthew 21, 23, and it goes like this. And when he had entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders and the people who came up to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus answered them, I will all also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Then why did you not believe him? And if we say from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And so Jesus entered the temple and is approached by the chief priests and elders, and they begin to question him about his authority to be able to speak. They don't question what he's able to do, but they do question his authority to be able to speak. And so they ask, who gave you authority to do these things? And they would like to stop him from teaching completely. Uh, I suppose they would like to stop the cure which is interesting that they would choose to not let people be healed. Today, we would love for people to be healed and for everything to be back. But they choose rather than their own uh, authority being questioned, they choose that it would be Jesus' authority who is questioned and to stop all healing just to discredit him. Jesus could have told them, my authority comes from God. But he chooses not to do that. Instead, he chooses to say, let me see if you can make a decision and come to faith. And so when he questions them, he says, I want to ask you about John. What was John? Where did John come from? Was John from God? Or was John just some guy who came up and tried to tell everybody what he thought? Well, that poses a huge question for the chief priests and the elders, and they try to decide what should we do. Now, anytime you're making a decision, it should be based on the merits of what you want to decide on what is true. But that's not how they decide. They want to decide based on the results. And so what would the results look like? What would happen if we said, well, he's from heaven? And they realized that they hadn't done anything to do what John said or to follow his advice. And so they recognized that we look like hypocrites then. And so they can't really say, and they don't really believe that John is from God and that John is saying the things from God. And so they don't want to say that because they don't want to look bad. It would make them look bad in Jesus' eyes and also in the eyes of the people. And so if they say he's just from men, well, the rest of the people decided that John really was a prophet, that John really was from God, and that he was speaking the truth of God. And so they're left with a very difficult choice. Do we look bad in the eyes of the people, or do we look bad just because we're hypocrites? Do we call John someone who's just an ordinary guy, and we don't believe him? Or do we look like you know, this is a man of God that we have chosen not to follow. I don't know what the decision would be today, if that would even concern someone today. But it is their decision then. And so they have a third option. And that is, we can't decide. We don't want to decide. And so we will say, I don't know. Those words are deadly to faith. Anytime we want to say, I don't know, it means we cannot believe. We cannot decide 
And if we cannot decide what is true and what is real, then we cannot believe. And so there is no hope for us in believing in God if we are just going to wait and see how it comes out. We do need to be able to decide what we believe. And so how do we decide? Do we decide based on our advantage and what gives us the most credibility and the most good? Or do we decide what's based on the group and what is good for the group? Or do we decide based on what's really true and what we believe is true? What does that decision to believe look like? The second issue of faith might be whether we are right or wrong. If we have been able to decide the first time, then it is easy enough to be able to change our opinion and change what we believe so that we can believe what is correct. As soon as we find something better, as soon as we find a new authority, as soon as we realize what is true, we are able then to decide again and be able to decide much better. What will we decide today? Well, some things we just don't know. We don't know about coronavirus. We don't know exactly what will happen. But we can know about God, and we can know that God is real and that God is in control. And so we can make a decision about that, and we can choose to trust him. I pray that that will be our decision today as we look at what is going on in our world and some of the things that we've had to do in order to cope in the last few days.